Sorry, my voice is a bit croaky this morning. I think um, a cold has kind of gripped our family. Gabby's battling, Sharon's in bed. Um, I think the only one that's maybe skipping out on it is Joel. He's up in Rockhampton. <laughs> so hopefully he misses out on it. Before we get into um, the passage, um, as Jeff was saying, it is Pentecost Sunday. It's the Sunday um, originally called Feast of Weeks, the end of um, Pesach or Passover, and it aligns so greatly with, um, with our Easter. And um, we all have read, no doubt, from time to time in the Acts as uh, Peter um, stands up and, and gives a wonderful sermon. And he points the finger and he says, You crucified Jesus. You crucified the Lamb of God. And um, God's Spirit is poured out on people. And um, it hasn't stopped until today. And it's not going to stop until Christ returns. But it's a wonderful time of, of knowing that Jesus said that he would send a comforter. He would send somebody to, to take care of us. And um, we kind of, as, as people who have mostly grown up in real conservative kind of churches, put the Holy Spirit to one side and we kind of box it in and we say, yes, it's the Holy Spirit, but don't go to these weird and crazy stuff that people do. You know, let's just keep it in a box. But it's so important for us to realize that the Spirit is something that comes directly from the heart of God. God's Spirit is, is something that speaks to us, that is our, our guide, our counselor. Um, and we, we, we can't ignore Him because He not only illuminates Scripture, but he, he really is the one that stands with us moment by moment, day by day. And we don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We pray that God would use His Spirit within our lives and within the lives of others. And, and the Spirit came not only to illuminate Scripture, but then also to, um, to edify Christ, to, to, to bring Christ up, to, to show who Christ truly is. That's the work of the Spirit. And if you've been a believer for any amount of time too, God's Spirit within you is the witness of Jesus Christ happening in your hearts and your minds and your lives. And it's really important for us to, to take hold of that and, and, and to really identify it and, um, and, to, and to pray in the Spirit. We, we, God's given us His Spirit, lives within us, abides within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to act like it too. And, and this morning, it is such a great privilege for me to preach from Psalm 119. We had a running joke when I was younger that um, if we saw Psalm 119 up on the board, you know, you would have these old boards with, the, with the, um, what, what Bible readings, and you saw Psalm 119, you saw nothing behind it, you were in big trouble, because you know you're going to be there for all 176 verses, and he was going to go to town on each verse, and you'd be there for about two weeks. But um, it is such a wonderful, wonderful psalm. Um, let's pray before we, we, we hear from God's Word. Father, I want to thank you for your wondrous Word. I know we, we go and we read books and we read so many other things, articles, um, blogs. But Lord, I pray that we would be found in your Holy Word that your Holy Word would so change us forever, would change us from who we think we are to who you know we are. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would illuminate, would shed light, would um, so brighten your Word that would give us understanding, and that understanding would transfer into knowledge, and that knowledge would be eventually translated into wisdom. Make us wise, not in our own eyes, but in your uh, word. Father, I pray too for all the money that gets brought into the church too. Lord, I pray that um, whatever we gather from whatever source, may it be to your glory. May it be because you have willed it 
because you have apportioned it not only to our church but but to the work that you're going to be doing father thank you once again that we have this great privilege of being called uh, your sons and your daughters that we are being called co-heirs with christ so lord be with us now as we hear your word being proclaimed in jesus name we pray amen so turn please in in your bibles to psalm 119 it is such an incredible incredible psalm i for the longest time i was so scared of verse of psalm 119 because it was so big anything big i kind of shy away from it's it's stupid it sounds really silly but the more i i got to listen to it and the more i heard sermons on it the more i wanted to read it and if i can encourage you maybe this week take it as and use it as a devotion there is yeah like i said there's 176 verses um, there's still a bit of debate as to who wrote it. It was either King David or Ezra. Um, so there are, uh, yeah, there are scholars that, that, that kind of switch between the two. But we do know that the Holy Spirit guided either King David or Ezra to write this wonderful psalm. And in the psalm, we, we get to hear 12 different uses of word. God's word is, 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 is timeless as we know, but there are different ways of referring to God's word. Um, one is the law. We understand the law that was given. Um, we think of the law, we think of the first five books of the Bible, was given um, testimonies, uh, ways, statutes, precepts, commandments, righteous rules. God has given his righteous rules so that we would be obedient to them and that they would be written on our hearts and that that rule would guide us as we walk day by day, moment by moment in his presence. It's referred to as your word, your rules, your wondrous works. Um, as we read God's word and we see his wondrous works in his word, it, remind us, it reminds us of the promises that God has given to us. Um, each one of us, each one of us has been given this wonderful book, not just to admire or to put on a shelf, but to, 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 to physically digest and, and take it in. <laughs> one, of my, um, one of my pastors years ago, I think I was 18 or so, uh, he was one of the, oh, just, just an incredible pastor. He... He, he studied in, in the U.S. and he studied in Texas. And you know everything is bigger and better in Texas. And, and this one guy was a, a cowboy. And um, he, he, he was being witnessed to by Kevin and witnessed to by Kevin and witnessed. And then all of a sudden, God just broke into his life. And you know them, they go, yee-haw! And he was running around the church and he says, this word is so incredible. And he took a bite out of his Bible. <laughs> and he says, I just want to eat it. It's, it's everything to me. And yeah, he just ran around and he was so, so filled with joy at God's word that had now made sense. And God's spirit had, had shone a light on the word. And, and he has this big cowboy guy crying and laughing and, and just being so joyous about God's word. Um, it's called your promise and the word of truth. We know it as the word of truth because nothing else compares to it. In, in, in every part of scripture, we see how true it is because scripture confirms scripture. As we look at scripture and, 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 and we confuse, let's go to other parts of scripture. See, have a look how it confirms one another. So, so that's just a, a bit of a um, heads up on, on, on um, Psalm 119, um, but let's get into it. Let's get into it. Verses 1 to, seven, 1 to 7. It said, blessed are those who, number one, walk in the law of the Lord. What, what does it mean to walk in the law of the Lord? Well, it means to every foot step we make, every, every step we take is according to God's word. The law that has been written down and handed down and passed down from, from prophet to prophet to prophet to, to John the Baptist, to, to Jesus himself as he spoke and, 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 and really fulfilled the law. Um, as we walk in that law, the law of the Lord, we, we can see an obedience that, that starts to form within our lives. 
And as we walk, we, we, we understand that, that, that God has given us this law, not, not because um, it's something nice and it's something nice to read, but it's something for us to live by, moment by moment, day by day. So we walk in the law of the Lord. Secondly, um, blessed are those who keep his testimonies. His, his testimonies. What are those? Well, well, we look at the Ten Commandments, and we and we think of the law, and we think of his testimonies. Um, we think of how how uh, that was written on the tablets and and given to Moses, and he brought it down, and and that was the law to be given to the people. Blessed are those who seek him with their whole heart. What does it mean to seek somebody with your whole heart? Um, I don't know if you can remember that far back when you fell in love. When you, when you had all those mushy pee feelings about the person that you, that, that you love. And you, you, you wanted to do everything possible with your whole heart to please that person. You saw that person and, and just you went, to, you went to, to absolute pieces because of that person. Now God wants to draw us back to that place when we fell in love with Jesus, when we read his word and came to a great understanding of what he's done for us. His life, death, and resurrection, um, he wants us to seek him with our whole heart, with everything that we have inside of us. If we don't do that, we are half-hearted and, 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 and we don't have a whole heart. And God longs for us to be people with whole hearts. And He wants to bless us because we've got whole hearts. And our hearts are centered on who God is and what He's speaking to us through His Word. Verses 1 to 7 also says, Blessed are those who do no wrong. Blessed who do no wrong. Blessed are those who walk in His ways. Blessed are those who keep precepts diligently. What are the precepts? Well, that's another word for God's Word. The precepts of the Lord are altogether right. Follow them. God makes our hearts steadfast when we keep His statutes. When we do keep His statutes, we will not be put to shame. Because our eyes are focused on His commandments. They're fixed on His commandments. I, I don't know if you've seen somebody who, who, who's, who's sung a song and it's so touched you on the inside. And you can't take your, 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 your eyes off of that person. Um, and, and, and you hear the, the voice that comes out and it's almost angelic. And, and, and you just, you're transfixed. Now that's what God wants us, to be transfixed on His Word. To look at it, to, to look at it all in wonder. To learn from it. And to know that we mustn't take our eyes off of God's Word because that's where life begins, is in God's words. Those who are upright in heart will praise God because they have learned His righteous rules. And then you go to verse 9, there's a question. How can a young man keep his way pure? For, for a fact, how can an older person keep their way pure? How can a, a lady who, who, who's battled her whole life or a young lady who's just beginning her life keep their ways pure? And the answer comes straight by God's Word, by guarding it, his or her way, according to His Word. God's Word is the same as a road with a 200 meter drop on either side. And you've got these, these, these guardrails that are, are, are deep down into the road. That if you do veer off and you, and you knock into the guardrails, it, it saves you from going over the edge. That's what God's Word is. It's a that, it's that guardrail. Those rails of, of safety against going over the edge of the cliff. God's Word provides the best and only way to be 100% pure in this mixed up world. You don't have to go far to understand how messed up this world is. Every part of the media wants to assault you with sensuality, with power, with riches at any cost. Only God's Word, illuminated by the Holy Spirit, gives us commands to keep our hearts pure, our minds pure. There is nothing else that can keep us pure except for God's Word, illuminated, spoken to by the Holy Spirit within our lives. Only God's solution for sin can cleanse a sinner of their sin, their guilt, and their shame. Think a bit about your life. Think about those times where, where you have really messed up. There's not one person here that hasn't done that. 
Think about those times. Think about the shame, the guilt, the anger, the self-loathing that happens on the inside. And you've tried everything. You've tried to, to drink it away. You've tried um, uh, relationships. You've tried sport. You've tried, it doesn't matter what you've tried, but it cannot fill the void that is in your heart because of sin. Do you want to live a pure life? Live according to the timeless and enduring word of God. Let God, God's word be the guardrails of your life. Either side of you. Lord, hem me in with your word. May your word be, be, be my go-to place that I go to every single day. Do you read God's word regularly? Be honest. How often? Most of us, if we answered honestly, not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. We, 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 we don't go there first. Why do we doubt? Why do we fall into sin? Why do we create such havoc in our own lives? Because we don't know and we don't trust God's word. Because we don't read it. If you need to know something, you've got to read the instructions. Don't read it out of compulsion. It's so easy for us to go through and just read it and read it and it means nothing. Don't read it because it's the right thing to do. Read it because you love God and because He loves you. He's given it to you freely. When you truly love someone, you want to please them in any way possible. We should do the same with God. You want to please Him? You want to love Him? You want to, you want to show Him your devotion? Get to know who He is. Get to know the true God in His Word. He's given us His Word so that we would know Him. Not just know of Him. Verse 25, our natural bent is to cling to this world. Hold on to this life. Desire it. Love it. Embrace it with everything we have. The psalmist says, my soul clings to the dust. Oh God, my very soul longs to have wealth, riches, power, greed, lust, pride, position, status in this world. This world has marred the image of God so much that it's barely recognizable. I want to get fat on the world. I want to cling to it as much as I can. That's our natural propensity, to want the world above all else. But the second line of the verse says, give me life according to your word. Give me life according to your word. We don't know what true life is until we, we know what Christ's life is and what the word says to us. The psalm writer wants uh, something this world can't give. True life according to the word of God, according to his precepts, according to his law. As his law sets forth in scripture, that's how we are supposed to be living. Know this, the only way you can be saved is by hearing the gospel preached to you. Yes, I understand that, that there's others that have dreams and have visions, but that they, are, they are not even a percent of how people come to Christ. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Christ isn't called the bread of life or the word of life or the word made flesh for nothing. Partake in the scripture so that you may get to know the living word, Christ himself. Get to know him, not know of him. What does Christ say to those that are on his right Depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. Christ didn't know you. Yes, we would, we would know of Christ. But Christ didn't know us. What a horrible day that's going to be for a lot of people. Who, who are so self-deceived that they think that they are saved. And then they get there and they come face to face with, 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 with God. And he says, depart from me. Move on to verse 57. The Lord is my portion. He's everything I ever need. A portion here is not just a little bit of a whole, but it's the whole of the whole. It's everything. That's what a portion is. A portion fills you up. 
God is totally sufficient for all your needs. He is our delight, our everything. As we, as we look at God in His Word, through His Word, He becomes that everything that we could ever have. This passage just really stood out to me. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Listen to these words. They are so beautiful. This is Peter. Peter who, who, who denied Christ, who ran away. The same Peter that stood up at Pentecost and, and, and preached and pointed a finger and couldn't care if he died or not. But he was so empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is the same Peter writing. No doubt this was just before his death as well. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to, uh, uh, to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us precious and very great promises. So that through them, these promises in God's word, through them, you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in this world because of sinful desire. Wow! Aren't those incredible words? That we are partakers of His divine nature. Christ living in us. The Holy Spirit living in us. D directing our ways. Being our guardrails. Showing us where we should walk. Where we should be. If somebody so timid as Peter could become a force of nature through the Holy Spirit, what about us? What about us? What have we got to be ashamed of? We've won already. Christ has won the victory. There are little battles that we face. And some of us know all too well. Financial, hospital, personal. These battles we will face. But Christ has won the victory. God will deal with us according to his word. Verse 65. What God's word, uh, word says he will do. He is true to his word. He can't do anything else. <laughs> I know we are, we, we, um, just like the Indian says, white man speak with forked tongue. <laughs> That's us. We speak with forked tongue. We say one thing one day and we'll say another thing another day. But God's word is altogether true, altogether right. His word will not disappear or end. It has been established in eternity past and will be, us in, be with us in heaven one day as a testimony to his great mercy, to his great love that he bestowed upon us. Come to grips with, with what God is saying in his word to us this very day. It is history. It is a history of his, his great mercy and love to each one of us. Verse 66 says, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. I believe in your commandments. Do you believe them? As you read them, as they, 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 they bring their promises out, and, 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 and they show you good and, and, and wholesome way of living, a good wholesome life, do you truly believe them? Or when circumstances hit, and you, you're in the, in, in the depths of despair, is that the last place we go to? Verse 81. The psalmist writes, My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. Before God broke into our lives and made us aware of our need for salvation, we went about our lives, oblivious of the fact that, that we are lost in our sin, that we're lost in, 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 in everything we do, awaiting judgment. Then the Word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, made us aware of our precarious position. A wonderful, wonderful sermon was preached many years ago in America. Sin is in the hands of an angry God. If you ever want to be frightened out of your wits, go and read that. One um, person said that they were walking towards the church and um, from a far away, they heard the wails and the screams of the people inside, crying over their souls, knowing that they are lost in their sin and they needed salvation. He, he made an analogy of a, of a spider hanging by a, a thin thread over a, a fire. And that's exactly what we are before we know Christ. We're dangling precariously over 
eternal damnation. With regards to salvation, understand that God saves us from ourselves. He saves us from our sin, our guilt, our shame. He saves us from the emptiness that's within, uh, within us. Ecclesiastes says that, that there's this uh, eternity has been created in our hearts. Secondly, God saves us to Himself. He saves us to be holy, to be righteous. Sanctification. Yes, it's a mouthful. Being made holy moment by moment. Once we are saved, God's Spirit works within us. Is our guide, is our, is our, 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 our angel on our shoulder, if, you, if, if, if you'd like to think it that way. Telling us what to do and what not to do. And then lastly, for all eternity God saves us. We are tr- if we are truly saved, we cannot be unsaved. If we are truly saved, nothing and no one can take us out of God's hands. Saved for all eternity. Scripture tells of people who are self-deceived. They think that they are saved. Emotions run wild. And it's all about feeling and, 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 and not much about knowing. But you see, real salvation through Christ doesn't rely on circumstance or feeling or emotion. You see, God saves us by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ's sinless life, death, and resurrection. God is busy saving us by empowering us through His Word day by day. You want to be saved? You want to continually be being saved? Read His Word. Sanctification then happens. And God will ultimately save us on the day when we see Him face to face. Finally, Psalm uh, verse 169. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Here we hear the deep cry of either uh, David or Ezra. Please, Lord, listen to my cry. Don't ignore me, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let your word give me knowledge of you so that your Holy Spirit may instruct me wisely about that knowledge. Lord, give me wisdom. I've just taken a couple of verses from this wonderful psalm. There's so much more there. There is, it's a treasure trove. Dive in and, 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 and see the rubies and the, and the sapphires and the pearls of wisdom that God has placed there for you in your life. Moment by moment, day by day. As you go through really tough times, understand that, that this psalm will stand you in good stead. That God's word will stand you in good stead. Not because of who you are, but because of who he is. His promises are yes and amen. Rely on Him. Rely on His Word. Don't ignore His Word. Read it over and over. Let it become part of you. Don't ignore what God has given us in His Word. Let's pray together. Father, thank You once again. Thank You for Your great Word that's been given to us. Your love that, that, that permeates every word in Scripture. But also the judgment that we have to face if we don't know you. And if you don't know us. Lord, drive us towards your word. Illuminate your word through your Holy Spirit. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.